Okay, well, Adriana, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having me. Um, it's so amazing to hear what you recently just announced um, on social media is that you're declaring for the soccer draft, something that is so um, uncommon, really, in the state of Alabama. We don't hear about it as much, or it may not get the publicity that it probably deserves. So just start off by telling us how you fell in love with this sport. Okay, so it is an interesting journey, as most people who play soccer start at a very young age. I didn't start playing soccer until I was about 12. Um, basketball was my first love, as most people in the South, <laughs> basketball, football. So I um, had the opportunity to play with the travel team that my friend, um, her dad had coached. And then it kind of just took off from there. And I was able to go to college, so on and so forth. And here I am now. So by the time and you went to Northview, Yes. Right. By the time you got to Northview, what kind of sparked this moment where you were like, OK, this is something I can do beyond high school? Uh, I think for me, it was in about 10th grade. Be before then, it was really a love hate because as a goalkeeper, which is the position I play, it takes a lot out of you. It takes time to understand that not every goal is your fault and that if you lose a game, it wasn't just on you. There's 10 other people on the field that the ball has to go through. So it took me a while to get over that hurdle because I took it very personally. I was like, well, I just lost the game. So um, about 10th grade, I kind of had a switch of mindset from it's all on me to it's, it's very much a team game. And from then on, I started looking forward to playing in a collegiate level, seeing if I could play in a collegiate level. Um, I believe it was around that time I was able to play for our tryout with ODP, which is the Olympic Development Program. And that really sparked my interest because a lot of coaches were looking at me. Um, a lot of colleges had showed interest in me, even at such a young age. So after that, I was like, oh, yeah, I can I could probably do this. You talked a little bit about what people don't know about being a goalkeeper, but just talk a little bit about what people don't know about being a soccer player, the way that you guys have to train, the way you have to mentally prepare each time you go out there. So a lot of people, especially if you see an athlete, a soccer athlete, they think you either run track, you're a volleyball player, or just anything other than soccer. So I think that's a very misunderstanding about, especially like our type of build. Um, we train pretty much I would say it's a CrossFit type training because we don't necessarily train just our legs or just our arms. It's, it's full body all round to make sure that we're able to take hits from other players, hits off the ground if you're a goalkeeper, and just um, the ability not to tear ligaments, injuries, injury prevention, things of that nature. So I think a lot of people don't understand how much work goes into the training aspect on and off the field because obviously diet plays a very big role in it and just what you do outside of team training if you're not running or working on your endur endurance or soccer skills outside of the field then you probably won't be good on the field so wow crazy to think um but of course we know how physical the sport is really so um thanks for that insight talk a little bit about your decision going to una what kind of solidified the moment where you said this is for me um, so, uh, as you know, I actually didn't start at UNA. I started at UAH in Huntsville and I did four years there, which, you know, I had a great time. I was able to get with amazing coaches, um, who really helped me get to where I am today. Um, senior year decided to transfer just to see if I was able to be more than what I was. And that for me was division one. And so I, put my name in a portal and immediately the UNA head coach, Christopher Walker, he had contacted my old head coach and was like, I'm interested in her and I would love for her to come play with me. And UNA was not my first choice. I was looking elsewhere. Um, but after meeting with the coaches, I went on a visit. Uh, my parents met with them. They just it was it was like a family from the first time I talked to them to the time I signed my name saying I would go there. It was just they were very opening or open and very welcoming. And it was just a no brainer. And I'm sure it felt good to stay in the Tennessee Valley. You're going from Huntsville to Florence. They're all kind of around there. I know it's like an hour and 30 difference. But, yeah, I live in that area. So I'm familiar with with how it feels up there. It's a good feeling, too. Yes, it is. For sure. So now you're at this moment and you're declaring for the soccer draft. First of all, what went into that decision? Because to say that, to put your name out there, it takes a lot. 
you're taking a big risk coming from a smaller school. So talk about the confidence that you have to have to step out in this moment. Yeah. So um, my parents will tell you they get mad at me all the time because I can be a little too humble and I don't understand like exactly sometimes how good or how good people think I am, or even if my stats show how great I am, because I came off of an amazing season. I was the conference's goalkeeper of the year. Um, I just had a lot of accolades in that that measure, set some records, broke some records. And for me, that is kind of trivial because I know I can do and be much better. So I don't really think of it that much. But after a while, I was like, you know what, actually, let's take a minute and step back. You really did great work this year. So after seeing all my stats and seeing that my name is is still ranked nationally, um, I was like, people know who I am, so let's just go for it. For me, I never had a dream of playing professional. I, I always talked about it, but it was never something that I was like, oh, yeah, I'm actually going to do it. It was just what people wanted to hear <laughs> because, again, they thought that I was um, above and beyond. So I just never put it into action until – I saw my stats, I saw my name nationally, and I was like, yeah, maybe I could give it a try. And once I got that confirmation email, I said, wow, okay, here we are. <laughs> Talk about how the process has been now. Have you been being reached out to? Um, I know sometimes they invite you guys on camps and stuff. How has that been? Uh, the process is actually a lot harder than you would think. And I keep telling myself, maybe it's because if it was easy, everybody would do it. But unless, and what I've figured out, unless you're in the know as far as already top of the of the list in their eyes or in a highly ranked school, there's not much information out there on like how to go pro. So I've had to do a lot of independent like searches figuring out if I need an agent, do I need to do this? Should I be applying to camp? Should I do this? So it's been a lot of independent work because even co my coaches, it's just very little information in that field. So a lot of it has been what I can find, what I can do with what I find and see if something sticks. So my last question is just, what is your dream this year for it to happen? Or ideally, where would you want to be at? Um, I guess now that I can say I'm dreaming about it, <laughs> um, ideally, I've I've looked at one of the teams in Tennessee and, of course, in Houston, Texas. I would love to go to either one of those. But honestly, if I get drafted, that would be dream dreaming enough. I um, have the uh, opportunity to actually go be there live when they're doing the announcements. And I told my mom, I said, if they call my name, I'm going to be looking around the room because I will not expect it. <laughs> I would not expect it at all. So honestly, coming this far is a dream enough for me. I really didn't think that I was have the opportunity to go further than what I've done. And I'm truly blessed. So, Well, thank you so much, Adrian. Of course, we're wishing you the best. The people in the Wiregrass are all hands on deck supporting you. And we're hoping to hear your name proud as well.